Hey everybody, welcome to Talk and Draw with Patrick Scullin, Travis Hansen, and our good buddy Sonny Sue. Welcome, Sonny. Hey, hey, how are you guys doing? Well, we're good, doing good. good. <laughs> so uh, we were just chatting before we started about uh, our video game history. <laughs> it might give you a little bit of a sneak peek into what we're talking about tonight. But before we dive into that, I did want to uh, introduce Sonny, who is uh, not only an amazing artist and illustrator, um, he has an extensive teaching background, and that's one of the things that we want to talk about tonight is uh, your education in art, both formal and informal, even, for students. Um, but uh, I did want to mention, I remember when Sonny and I first met, one of the things that uh, he was known for was having started the Pencil Mileage Club. Isn't that right, Sonny? Yes, yes. What was that all about? That was uh, my, my late good friend who passed away a few years ago, Mike Williams. And that was actually his idea. And I met him in, I think, 96, when I first went to Fullerton, Kelsey Fullerton for um, animation. And and he had this idea to, to form a club just for the animators. And, and so I remember we were sitting at a Danny's and just probably late night and eating and talking about it. And so 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 we we just founded a club and and mostly because we, we thought that, you know, if we can get, you know, students to go um, like go to coffee shop at the time. It was just such a popular thing to do in the 90s, go and people watch and sketch. And then later on, we even will, you know, pull in money and basically hire our own models. Uh, usually these are models that are already opposing working for the school. So, so we kind of created our own little uh, extensions, you know, of, of practice and work. And so, so that, and then we would go to the zoo and things like that. So that was, that was fun. And, and we were, we were there for maybe like two to three years and, until we both um, graduated and move on. But then, what what I guess we could have never anticipated was was the pencil the pencil mileage club lived on at Fullerton. In fact, even now, at Fullerton is still there after twenty some odd years, and it's it's grown into one of the larger um, uh, student organization on campus. So 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 that's pretty neat. And yeah. so, so I will always be thankful that I was part of that. So oh, founding cool. member, if any Fullerton students are listening, um, <laughs> that's where it started. Um, all right, so uh, Travis, um, tonight we're gonna do a little drawing and we're gonna draw, I'm gonna let you introduce what our drawing subject is. Well, tonight we get to draw video games, like a character or something that has to do with a video game. And, and thinking about it, I, I keep thinking, going back, well, shoot, I started playing on the Atari, you know, and then you had <laughs> Activision and I used that, you know, and then we had Apple IIe and we've been talking a little bit about that. but. Where it's basically anything with a video game. So something that's going to be fun, different, and unique. That that's going to be our drawing subject for this evening, as we dig into our uh, adventure with Sunny about, uh, you know, yep. and you because you know you were you're a, you not were but you are a teacher as well, and me I'm just a, a pain in the butt. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll start sharing the screen Good. and uh, get things going and uh let you start asking some good questions and then uh, we'll see where we go from there all right awesome yeah. fantastic so here's here's the very first important question what is your first game system <laughs> <laughs> well mine mine was a uh, apple 2e apple 2e and and then i had a lot of those i like handheld you know um game and of course now, you know, now we just play game on our phones, but back then, you know, we had these little small handheld game that only had one game, it was totally pixelated. So those are my first early gaming ex experiences. Do you remember the, the football game? Where yes. it was like three dots and, and, <laughs> and then two dots and then one dot and then another dot and the goal was to get across. You have the little red <laughs> dots, the little, yes. That was my I can, favorite. I can hear the noise in my head from that little handheld thing. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. I, uh, I think my first game system was an Atari. And uh, we had an Intellivision. You mean you mean your parents for let's really break this down. It was your parents <laughs> first game system that they let you play. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I they didn't play it. I know. <laughs> my dad did. <laughs> you see, for me, it was my uh, my late uncle. He hooked me up with all the good stuff. Oh man, I wish I had an uncle like that. <laughs> I had cool uncles, but, but not like that. <laughs> well, so 
you know, Sonny admitted that he's been playing games for 40 years. I think there's probably only one other thing he's been doing longer than that, which may be drawing. How about, is that right? Oh, yeah, I would, I would say so. Yeah. And, and I, I think, you know, when I was asked to pick the topic for tonight, um, um, I just thought, you know, gaming just makes sense because that's something that I've been doing all my life. And I, I would have to say that gaming, my experience of gaming, it, 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 it sort of influenced my, my, my own creative adventure and it sort of go back and forth. And, and so, so yeah, so, so I'm really passionate about it, but I wouldn't say that I'm a diehard gamer or anything like that. I, I just enjoy it. What was your favorite, uh, um, game that you, you that you can remember your old oh, favorite oldest old school game um oh uh, beer tap <laughs> beer tap <laughs> you mean tapper 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 yeah yeah oh i i can still hear the music in my head that game was so fun tapper, <laughs> oh. that's right for me it was uh i love dig dug oh dig oh dig duck is great oh i love that too that was that was awesome. Sorry, we're not talking about drawing right now. Now we're talking just about gaming. <laughs> yeah. well, I think my favorite game was Contra on the NES. Oh, Contra! Oh, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. And Pitfall. Pitfall was my Activision one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And Pitfall. then there was another one. It was like an alien invasion that you had to stop. And there was, I can remember, it was three alien bases. No, you had, you had, uh, you had to destroy three aliens or something. And that's all you did on the screen was you destroyed these things over and over and over again. And then if you got to, <laughs> you had to get to like a million points and then you could take a picture and send your name in. And I can remember trying for months to get there. And then I got so close and it was like a whole family thing. You know, it's like, oh, ah, you know, uh, so, I mean, that was when it was fun. <laughs> well, you know, I. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, I didn't want to, I don't want to go on too many tangents, but you know, one of, that's one of my critiques about gaming today is that it was so much easier when you could just pop in a quarter and play for oh, 30 yeah. seconds. Now there's so much, you know, storylines and things that go into it that I, I, I just can't keep up. I feel like I have video game Alzheimer's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's like Dragon's Lair. So, I mean, if you want to get to something that's art. Oh, yeah. And, yes. And talk about, you know, that, that whole new level of gaming you know uh, of design i mean dragon's lair is a beautifully designed yeah. game it's very basic in its its procedure you just move your you know you just look where the light goes and then you hopefully can quick enough to move your your control panel that direction but man i i can remember looking at that and that being also one of the influences for fantasy for me mm -hmm. uh, i agree that game blew my mind and I, then space was, ace was the next one space, yeah yeah Oh, it that that taught me who Don Bluth was. <laughs> you know, that introduced me to that entire genre. Um, yes, that actually another tangent. <laughs> I I've tried to get every different version of of Dragon's Lair I could find over the years. I've had a, a CD-ROM version. I've had a um, Xbox version. I had an iPhone version. I'm looking for the Space Ace one. I've got the t the, the CD-ROM. <laughs> so well let me let me definitely dial back to our, our art <laughs> subject today um oh next, wait but can, can i can i add yes, one thing go ahead, that, Sonny. um i i actually really prefer games with stories in fact i i've gotten to a point that i don't really have that much time to play games i don't really play games that don't have stories anymore because because i actually draw a lot of influence um, from very story driven, uh, story driven games like Skyrim, which is uh, what I'm drawing right now, a Skyrim character, and, and just things like that. I think they're very immersive, and I think it it, it really it kind of it, it makes me feel like I'm I'm in a movie. So, uh, so Final Fantasy, that's a whole wow. other one. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah. I still have that on my. Uh, we have a PlayStation One, and I can mm -hmm. still play Final Fantasy on it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it takes so much time. You spend, you know, I mean, to beat it and do all the quests and everything mm -hmm. else and all the side quests, I mean, that's an easy 100 plus hours. Yeah. Which I could be drawing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we got to have our gateway into art somehow. And that's you know, right. video games definitely was a huge influence on all of us. And um, that Dragon's there for me, again, is that perfect convergence of video games, animation, art. So... Uh, when it comes to thinking about a professional career in art um, or design or animation, 
uh, we got some decisions to make, especially for students out there. Hey, where do I go to school? What do I want to learn? What do I want to study? So uh, my first question to Sonny would be, what advice would you give to someone that knows how to draw, that enjoys video games and storytelling? What kind of a, a program would you suggest they look for? What things would you suggest they study? Well, if they like game, I think animations and illustration, I think those will be the natural choices. And, and because they're very uh, narratively driven. And so, so, but you know, but I would say art in general is not a easy profession. It really is not, it's rewarding, greatly rewarding, but I'm sure you guys could all attest to it. It's not always, you know, shiny and pretty. So I think for any students who, who are passionate, I mean, it is good to pursue your passion, but also just be realistic about, you know, what can be done? What are some of the things that you have to be prepared, be prepared to do? You know, the, the, the amount of studying, the amount of practice. So I think just as long as they, they kind of keep it real, I think that would be great. And also, I think another advice that I would give is, um, this, this is sort of the teacher coming, coming out now, um, be flexible. Don't don't assume that you know you have this one thing in your mind that this is this is that one thing that you're gonna do and you'll be doing that for the rest of your life. Uh, it might not work out that way right away. It might not work out for a while, but just be flexible. Learn new skill, you know, and and there's so many things to uh, to to learn. I think having what you said, having that realistic, or try to learn to gain a realistic viewpoint of what you're getting into. You know, I hear yeah. so many kids they come out and the first thing they want to do is draw for Disney. Go, I'm going to work for Disney for the rest of my life. And they don't realize that every animation job for Disney is now contract. Mm -hmm. and, and you only work on the show that you're assigned to work on. And then you're out of a job when that show's done. Yeah. You know, and so I think there's a lot of, like you said, there's a lot of grandeur in it. But at the same time, you know, that grandeur is extremely misleading. Yeah. Well, and there's back to that. That word you said, flexibility, I, I think that's essential um, is whether it's being flexible in your job or in your job choices, but also just in your abilities, being, being flexible is really yeah. important. Um, how, how important do you think the digital tools are for artists today? I mean, we're probably preaching to the choir here. Anybody watching this? <laughs> I, but, I know, uh, right? <laughs> Well, you never know. I mean, I guarantee there's probably some kid out there going, maybe I want to do this. And, and, they're, and they love drawing traditionally, but they don't realize that, you know, our whole industry is moving digital. And it doesn't mean, and there, there's a misconception. In fact, I, I had this, mis, you know, I addressed it today, where the misconception is there's really, you know, it's like, oh, digital is way different than traditional. The only thing that it's really different is you have control Z, and you're drawing on a screen, you're not drawing on paper. You're still having to use the same hand techniques, the same um, pen movements, the same brush strokes. You're still, you still have to use what you learned uh, traditionally and just apply it digitally. Absolutely. So um, what would you say, Sonny, what would you say are some of those um, I don't want to say maybe principles or ideas that translate in any medium that you should pay attention when your teacher's talking in school. What are they, <laughs> what are the little gems that uh, they're handing out that you need to hear? I think, yeah, I think an awareness of, of compositions or compositional awareness, because that is just golden. It doesn't matter if you're doing graphic design, page layout or concept design. It, I think it's that. I mean, you, you, your computer is not going to make the, the decision for you. It's all just in you. So I think something like that and, and knowing how to control your focal point and how to prioritize your focal point and things like that, because those are just not in the software. That's in the person. So 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 I think as long as, you know, they're aware of that and the, the tool will, 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 will you know, expedite the process that's that's no doubt about that but but it's just if they think that there's a button that they can push and then and automatically make good art well they uh they, they're living in my land that Wait, world does not exist there's no like make it awesome button <laughs> uh, don't they teach that in the photoshop class yeah yeah what's the keyboard command oh the, here's my dad joke this is what i tell my students do you know what the shortcut is for making it awesome command you Dun, dun. 
<laughs> you, you know, wait, since, since, since we are, we are since we're talking, <laughs> since we are uh, talking about video game, there, there is one command that you can enter. It's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. If you enter that correctly, then, then yes, you will, you will, uh, you will make good art. <laughs> Get unlimited lives, right? Uh, anyway, yeah, I think, I think 30, 30 lives or something like that. I don't know. I forgot now. That's perfect. Well, um, Sonny, can you think back about any uh, of your favorite teachers and things that maybe they taught you? Oh, geez. Now I'll be saying their name out loud. Oh, are we, am, I, am I naming names? Or, <laughs> sure. Or just, just, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly? I don't know. <laughs> well, okay. Um, I, I think Fullerton, I went to Fullerton twice for both my undergrad and, and graduate. So, so I have fond memory of, you know, the, the faculty's there. Um, when I was in my undergrad, uh, I spent a lot of time with, um, with Larry Johnson. Uh, he was very, uh, very caring and, and would always just listen to you. And, and, and I think, you know, <laughs> I, I think in some way I model some of my, my, how I handle myself in, in, at school a little bit from him. And, and um, at school, the students kind of gave me a, a nickname ADM mom because I'm always sort of like bugging them like, hey, are you doing all right? <laughs> and things like that. And I think that, that kind of caring personality and I find that, you know, especially nowadays, look, you know, students could easily Google info. You don't really need us, but, but they might sometimes want to hear from someone that they, they care, you know, and that sort of things. And so I think, I think uh, um, Larry Johnson was, was, was a kind of a big influence. And then another one that is almost the opposite of that is um, there was an instructor called um, Don Lagerberg at Fullerton. I really enjoy him because he, he was very like disciplined as a person and very disciplined with his teaching and, and what he expects from students. So, and I think that one, I actually didn't really, I wouldn't say I model my teaching from him. I actually model how I want to be an artist from him because look, you know, learning how to draw hands. I, I remember taking uh, hands and head as a class from him and drawing hands and head. It's just so difficult for me at the time. And, but you know, it's not, there's no shortcut, you know, there's no, there's no shortcut to that either. You just have to tough it out. That's and dang sure. So, Oh, good. Well, holy cow, Travis, what have you already created here? <laughs> well, I'm doing some video game art. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And, and to me, the games always came alive. Oh. <laughs> That's something. So I'm we got a little, we got a little contra going on, and you know some dragon <laughs> dragons lair, but not with the same dragon because you know I don't want to break any uh, IP, you know, and get in trouble. <laughs> That's fun, Travis. That, so, that's, that's the lizard from Rampage. Remember that game? Yeah, oh, I love I love Rampage. That was awesome because you'd eat people to to get um to get more energy. And you can also eat um uh the the second player if you oh if you're first player you can eat your friends. That was that's right too. You could oh that game was awesome, Man, horrible movie but awesome game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, it was The Rock. Come on. It was a rock. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, do you want to talk about your uh, technique at all, Trav? Well, I don't know. Um, you know, it, it's kind of, for me, you know, this is just a sketch. And so I'm just trying to create, how do I make it fit and then make it feel like it's, it's right, you know, and still stretch it around and give it a, a kind of a, a cartoony feel. You know, where, when, when is it appropriate to, to bend the law of physics and dimension? Uh, <laughs> not dementia, but, but to bend those, those laws so that you can create something that's, that's fun and a little bit different. Um, that's definitely something I see in your drawings. Just that, that dynamism, that action, that um, everything kind of fits so it's fun to see that that energy now i mean and 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 to me i mean I, I i get for me my schooling was always the school of hard knocks <laughs> you know i i didn't uh, it, it just it, well i'll be honest i mean to some degree it wasn't as important to me and two i couldn't afford it at the time i had just gotten married and i was kind of lost and i didn't know what was going on you know, I mean, I appreciate school a lot. And I think you, especially um, it depends on what you're doing. You know, I look at it realistically 
you know, if you want to do illustration and stuff like that, um, schooling, you know, no matter how much schooling you have, if you don't have drive, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. You will, you, you will always sit there and go, well, I want to do this and stuff like that. So you got to figure out drive, but if you definitely want to do game art or you want to do animation, um, it's so important to get into school and see what's being taught there. Um, so that you can, you know, be on par with, with what's expected of you when you get into the industry, you know, and, and that whole battle there and, and watching, you know, these classes, you know, I'm, I'm grateful our community college has got such a great program for these kids um, to, to pick stuff up that will prepare them to go to one of these bigger schools. I think that's where we insert a shameless plug, right? Yes. You can um, insert any shameless <laughs> plug about RCC you want. You know? Yeah, Sonny and I are colleagues at Riverside City College. We teach in applied digital media and- And the school's um, called Community. Community. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, if you watch Community, it's very similar. Um, <laughs> but uh, we we take pride in, in uh, teaching our students and we, we are proud of what we, we do there. And um, we are definitely, I would say the best bang for your buck. Um, and uh, so that's the shameless plug, but back to what you were saying, um, it's, it's really important, important to open your mind and get out there and see what's possible. Well, um, and anything's possible. I mean, that's the other thing that we talk about. It's, it's like from an artist's point of view, you get in this this format that the only kind of art you're going to do is anime or the only kind of art you're going to do is, is I only want to draw comic art. Well, you're really limiting yourself on, on what you can and can't do. And I don't know if you guys have seen this, but if you only focus on just one kind of uh, uh, stream of income, then then you're going to be screwed when that stream dries up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that goes back to what we talked about earlier that flexibility you know mm -hmm. oh very much so so this is what i got so far you know a couple Looking. of video games nice uh, uh, and, and such and, and uh i and think it's that's how i really look you can tell by my buff arms so <laughs> <laughs> looking great hey and so maybe it's time to uh it is definitely time to jump over to sunny yeah sunny let's see what you've been cooking up all right so i'm gonna stop my share uh, let's see. Woo! I get to relax a little now. All right, there it is. What do we got here? See, now, um, I've, I've never seen you sketch, and so this is going to be awesome for me because Patrick has been bragging up a storm, and I already like what I see. I um. I'll tell you a backstory. I used to draw and sketch so slow because I wanted, in the, there was a time that I wanted to get every detail right. And I think, um, I think it might actually have been Larry Johnson that I was mentioning earlier that, that, um, cause at the time I really was really into the whole photo realism. And then he just told me, I think he said something, you know, I might be paraphrasing him now, but he, he said something akin to like, if you want photo realism, why don't you just take a picture or something? And I thought, how dare you say that? But then I realized what he was saying is, is because look, if you want photo realism, you can never really beat a photocopy machine, you know, or a camera. Why not just add something that is truly sort of your own. Well, at least that's the interpretation that I got from that. But then, would, you, would you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you drop that back layer so we can see your line work? Oh, hang on a second, layers, okay. Uh, there we go, so see, so, so this is important. I think an important part of the process is being able to see this. You know, I can see where you're putting the colors on, but I like how you, you you know, you were talking about blocking things out and you can see how you've blocked this out. You've got your creature coming in on the one corner and then you got your figure down in the foreground and um, getting ready to pull that bow and you've got very nice, you know, form in that, that human form. So, you know, well done on, on Thank you. Thank making you. that arrow look correct. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I, I do archery, so that was, that was just something that, that I, I know quite well what these things look like. But then, but then you know, one thing that I would say, one thing that Fulton, um, Kelsey Fulton has really taught me well, um, both times I was there, because well, the first time I was there, I was in the animation program, and one of the best things that I got out from there, a couple of things actually, one, perspective, 
Um, and then the other thing was, um, how did you all the human figure? And then, and then after that, I just, you know, just took it from there. And, and, but one of the things that came a little later was um, I picked up this thing called speed painting. I don't even remember how I first discovered it. And then and ever since then, I just limit myself to like 30 minutes to, a, to an hour just to do something that is sort of somewhat unfinished, but but at least still communicative. Um, a good thing that you asked for that, that sketch later, because I was really moment away from uh, flattening it, because because that was one thing that I have learned personally, that if I keep all those layers, um, I will end up being slower, because I, I like, you know, um, the stress of now I have no more layer. I have no more safety. I'm just going to have to go for it. Well, that's an interesting process the way to look at that, but this is just more for a quick sketch piece though, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, if you were working on something that was a lot more redefined, I bet you would have a lot more layers to it. Uh, I would take it from here and yes, I will have more layer on top of this, uh, but, but, for, for, but routinely I still will flatten them. I think that was just something that, that I found that it somehow works for me better that way, uh -huh. um, you know, with no safety net and, and uh, but I would say though, in, in the context of graphic design, oh, if I'm doing some graphic design layout, well then yeah, definitely layers, but concept painting, I think it's just faster that way for me. It's interesting because I'm always afraid to flatten. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it, uh, it, it's my OCD. I, 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 I don't have patience to do a long drawing. Um, I, um, I'm gonna throw a, a name out, you guys probably know this. Um, Craig Mullen, I love his digital painting, um, but the, even his painting is very loose, but I just can never really see myself spending that much time getting all the details. So all I really care about is just communicating the general concept, and, and I know I could be fast with that. Um, and but yeah so we, I, that's kind of how i approach my sketching we learn to be super quick with the sketch yeah. as you noticed you know yeah. how quickly can i get the piece out the idea out and then i yeah. refine as i go along and for me i'll usually keep maybe i keep like three layers at a time mm -hmm. but i try not to have more than three yeah four is like my limit yeah well, so um, right now, are you working on lighting and shading? Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah, yeah. What's your yeah. approach to that? Yeah, Th this is something that I picked up when I was um, at Fulton for my graduate school. Um, and this is something that I will say Cliff Cramp, um, one of my professors there, uh, taught me that um, lighting, lighting, color, those things really helps telling a story. So so in here, my line now has been merged now, so now it's just kind of a hot mess, but, but I'm pulling everything back out through lighting. Uh, because my end goal is not for, you know, to create this into a, you know, really refined painting. I just wanted to communicate. So, so, so I just need the lighting to come through and, and, and color. I, I like using color because color could really influence uh, people's emotion quite, quite powerfully. Well, what's interesting is you're explaining this. I can see this figure better and better and better, you know, and it just kind of just stands out. It's interesting that you go right to color because that's another thing I'm an, I'm afraid to do. I prefer. You have a lot of phobias. I do. I guess that's what it's all about. <laughs> no, I, and maybe that's my OCD. I'm afraid of making a mistake. So I, I tend to be more tenid, or timid in my approach, but I avoid color till the end. You know, this might be a good um, for you. I, I mean, just seeing you know, as we talk, this might be a great exercise for you. No, don't give me homework. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should do something like this where you challenge yourself. Because I like, I mean, I'm even looking at like how, how Sonny's doing this. And I'm thinking, you know what? I, this would be a fun way to approach this. Uh, because digital painting, that unnerves me. I mean, even oil painting unnerves me. I, I, I was always an inker and a penciler. Uh, you know, and, and I'm great. I have a good eye for color. But I've never treated it like this as a painting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I totally, you see, I think I had the opposite reaction is that for me, um, I don't paint, I draw. And so when I paint, I still draw. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I get it. You know, I tell you, my, my, I do like doing speed painting, but if you ask me to do like a long painting, I probably would say, mm, no. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, and then um, next to speed painting, what I really, really enjoy is uh, sketching in my sketchbook because, because there's something I think um, um, that I really kind of like 
um, the unfinished quality of sketches and speed painting that that seems like in, in art school we were told that no you got to finish it because those are just progress well it, depending on the context you know if, if you're finishing a, a work for clients yeah you can't do half finished work but if i'm just you know doing this for my own enjoyment i can totally do this you know my grandma had another name for half finished stuff <laughs> what is it <laughs> <laughs> she says never do a job half <laughs> oh i got it got it got it i i, I and this you. is a kid show so <laughs> <laughs> that's looking really fun i i think one of the benefits of doing this method is the energy really comes through in your brush strokes and the oh shoot the energy just in in, in watching him do this <laughs> this is great the trick also to, because I actually used to uh, have students do speed painting for their homework. Uh, one of the things I'll tell them to do is you guys will want to use the eraser for a while. That's okay. But soon stop using it and stop doing undo and stop doing using all your layers. So you get basically one shot. It's kind of like doing a one shot video that, that you know, it, it's hard. But, but at the same time, you know, as long as the expectation is that I'm not creating some kind of beautiful masterpiece. This is just some fun speed painting that I'm doing. And as long as I think I, I keep that in mind, then I'm not so, you know, terrified whether or not this will look okay because it isn't going to look like some museum quality thing. It's just, it's just fast. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I think as long as I keep that in mind, then, then, then I found my piece. I like that. I like that. that. I like that a lot. I mean, what a great exercise. You know, and then you can get a really good vibe of your of your character too. Yeah, I, I'm just amazed on how dark you went though. Usually they tell you to go light to dark and you're you seem to go the opposite. You know, you went very dark and now you're adding I, I think it has to do with uh, the character that I chose. Um, <laughs> I spent 900 hours on Skyrim, so so most of the mission is like, <laughs> I'm killing stuff. I'm killing stuff in the dark, so. So, so if I were doing something else, it might be different, but I think this one, I, I, I wanted to push for that dramatic lighting, that storytelling, so I think maybe that's why it went straight for that. Um, and, and I know I have heard, you know, um, you know, different people say you always go from light and dark, you know, dark to light, you know, from middle, go on both sides. And, and I, you know, to be honest with you, I've done them more and, and I don't really see any, like realistically, any big advantage of one method over the others. I think it's just depending on what you're trying to, to do. You know, I'm, I'm trying to create this picture of this archer guy sneaking up and killing a bunch of monster. I'm not going to make, I don't want to make it look like it came out of, out of SpongeBob, you know? Yeah, you do. <laughs> I've been watching the wrong SpongeBob then. <laughs> so um, did you pick the dark background for the setting or do you tend to go uh, for a dark background? Oh, no, it, the, this is for this setting. Yeah, the setting. It's for, for the story. Cool. And, and I think something that I have um, just learned through my own speed painting journey is um, if you're going to push for the dramatic, um, push for the dramatic, kind of like if, if, you, if you're going to make a comedy, make it funny. If you're going to make a sappy story, make people cry. If you're going to make a scary movie, make them like peer their pants, you know? And so, so I think, I think <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. You know, if, if I, I want to be obvious with what I'm trying to communicate and, and beyond that, because I have no control how, when my audience sees it, I, I can't be there narrating it. So I guess I have to make sure my, everything that I put in here is, is doing that. You know, that makes perfect sense. Can you show the whole um, composition yeah. again? Yeah, that's great. I like the backlighting too on that. Yeah, I see everything in backlighting. Patrick, every time I go to work and I see you, 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 you just always backlit. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's the halo over it's my the, head. I don't it's know. the halo, right? Of course. Of course. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I, I, I you know, I'm going to publicly say this. I, I am so glad that I'm working with you, Patrick. It, you, it's, it's, it's so nice to be working with you because I, I never have to. You, 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 you like Superman. I don't have to question <laughs> your judgment on things. And I got to tell you, you know, I, I've worked long enough to know that sometimes if we work for people who are different opinions, very different opinions, and, and, and sometimes questionable one, it, it just makes it difficult. But, but with you, you, you like Superman. I don't have to worry about... I think, you, I think Patrick should give you a raise. <laughs> if, well, I'm try I would, hey, hey, Fanny, I would I'm if it was to up to me. Here. I would if it was up to me. We work for a state college, so that's, that's out right. of our heads. But uh, thank you for the compliments, Sonny. I appreciate it. You know, it's, 
it's a pleasure to work with you as well. We uh, we're the dynamic duo. See, so, and I don't work with and you Batman. at all. <laughs> well, I was thinking, so we're we're just forming the Justice League here. I'll be Superman, Sonny could be Batman, and you Travis. say that I, if I'm not Aquaman. <laughs> 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 well, I was going to say I was going to say Wonder Woman, but maybe <laughs> well, I do have nice hips. <laughs> All right, so um Is another question turn? for you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, let me uh, let me uh, sh stop sharing. Is it your turn to share? Yep. Yeah, okay. Let Patrick Let's see what, yeah, I want to see, see what, what you got. I got here. Right, uh prepare okay. to be um unimpressed. Oh, we're always impressed. <laughs> here we go. Let's see if it pops up here. So when I was thinking about video games when we started this, I was trying to think my favorite game that I probably paid, played the most when I had my NES was Ninja Gaiden. Oh, <laughs> that game was fun. Hey, do you remember there was a, uh, uh, a Ninja game for like, it, was, it wasn't the Apple IIe, it was the next version or the PC where you would, you could kick or fight uh, one person at a time and then you worked your way all the way to the end to save this girl. Uh, Kung Fu. Yes, and then you could go in, and then she would. If you if you went oh. in like you were gonna uh, attack her, she would kill you. Oh no no that that's Karateka. Uh, yeah, yeah okay yeah. Karateka. That was yeah. my favorite game. Oh no that I oh you know I I played that game a lot on the FO2E, <laughs> and and I gotta tell you this is before the internet so there's no way I can like search like how do you get that girl not to kick you? No, and, it, it was set up in the game that she would kill you every exactly. time if you were aggressive. Yeah, yeah, and I guess I, I didn't know. I guess I never knew the true ending until much later because I would I always <laughs> get killed by his one kick, by her one kick. So that was that was no fun. So, and I always thought if she could kill you in one kick and you defeated the whole army, why didn't she just leave? Yeah, exactly. Why does she need saving? <laughs> I don't think I ever saw that game. Oh no, um, I know you did. If you go back and and I guarantee that you you've probably seen a version of it. Maybe so. So what's your approach here? What are we doing? Well, um, I was just trying to come up with a, a dynamic pose, trying to figure out, okay, what looks aggressive, but still kind of sneaky. Um, when I start, I do the kind of the rough, trying to find where the, the character's posture is and stuff. And right now what I'm trying to do is, is start adding details. Like I put in the, um, the arrow quiver and stuff. And I guess, I don't have a bow on there, so I got to figure out where to put his bow. But um, See that, yeah, you need a bow. Got to figure that out here too. But yeah, um, is it going to be a compound bow, or is it going to be just a simple cheap bow? Um, it's going to be just whatever fits right here in this little spot. <laughs> <laughs> so he's shooting a midget bull. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, it's what what I like about the contrast between our our three drawings so far is, um, you know, it's always fun to see yours, Travis. It's like setting a, an entire little cartoon adventure. And then Sonny, yours is like this dramatic scene from this showdown. And for me, I just kind of want to do a little character study of this particular. I like the character study. I think yeah. that works good. Yeah. The Gaiden guy. What, you know, speaking of art and stuff, what always bothered me is back in our day, the, uh, the game box artwork was always like a tease, right? You'd get this beautiful illustration on the <laughs> yeah. cover of that Atari box. And you're like, I'm going to, wow, I get to play Ninja Gaiden or whatever. And then you plug in the game and it's these crappy 8-bit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like that, that as a kid, I remember being so disappointed that the artwork never matched the gameplay. You mean and like on the old Atari boxes? Yes. And, and now, those were worse. And now, obviously, the gameplay is better than, I mean, it's better than real life. It's so artistic. So I think, I think the kids today are spoiled that they, their artwork matches the game. Yeah. You know, actually, there, there's still some of that, that what we experience is still, um, um, it's still prevalent in, in today's uh, gaming experiences because um, usually uh, trailer or, or the, in, the introduction to a game is sometimes... <laughs> It's not matching to the actual gameplay. Well, you look That's at true. Final Fantasy IX. I mean, that had that had some incredible artwork to it, yeah. and it, the gameplay was great too. But man, those yeah. cutscenes were amazing. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, I mean, 
I, I've gone back. My kids have played it a couple of times, and I'll just sit there just to watch the cutscenes. Yeah. I'm going, wow, you know, that, that's just amazing. But I, I, I do think that there's, you know, you have all these different variations of these games and different things. And, and one of the things that I, did, I do miss that I don't see now is I, I liked, like, Sierra had a whole line of games about building empires. Mm. You know, yeah. you could build Rome, you could build Olympus, you could build uh, the Chinese Empire. And it was all based on history mm -hmm. and, and such. And you, you don't see those games anymore. Uh, it's and, all and Minecraft I, now. Yeah. Well, it not even even the ones that are on Facebook or whatever, some of those sharing games or the ones in the apps, it, it's more of a competition. Play against your neighbor and wipe out your friends. Yeah. And And for me, I would rather play by my, you know, uh, on my own game. I wouldn't, I really didn't ever wanted to always be in a, a competitive group world. I just wanted to compete against me. Yeah. And, and I do miss that. Um, and I do think that's, that's a little bit different, but you know, I, I've noticed that there's several different types of versions of, of gaming out there. You know, you have the epics, you have the, the quick fight, you have the, you know, whatever, and each one has its own audience. Um, but the artwork is, is unique to those. Uh, you know, I looked at some of those city building games and they have some beautiful, you know, what is it? Is it 2D where it's like that cutscene you see, you know, it's, it almost has that 3D appeal, but it's not mm. where you can see like the building and the interior of the building and you can see how it's working and everything else. And I mean, just, you know, those really cool effects. And, and I see that, you know, now you, you've got these kids coming in. And they just want to jump in and do that. So what would you say to, to a kid um, to start doing now to prepare themselves for, you know, if they can't get into um, Pasadena or, or some of the bigger art colleges that specialize in the gaming, what would you say to how to prepare themselves now for your program to help you get them there? Man, that's a deep question. No, that's a good question. What do you think, Sonny? You know, I, I think I'm going to answer it um, like this. Uh, it, in fact, it, my uh, I'll give you a little backstory first. My 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 daughter, who is only five, uh, just turned five, and and I actually introduced her to now early gaming. It's just like little kids ones. But one thing that I have observed that that she's behaving very differently than than when I was a kid was that. Um, as soon as the game gets hard, she wants to go to the app store and find another game. And I'm thinking, I remember thinking that that wasn't my experience. I get a game and I'm stuck with that for a long time. But also another thing that I was talking to another friend recently is that gaming has become far more forgiving. Some of the games that we have played when we were kids, they were really, really difficult. But did we give up? Of course not. We kept playing on it for hours, hours, hours until we got it. And I think that's, that's all we had. And 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 I think it, yeah, I think there's that. But I think I think maybe the larger life lesson, you know, since I'm kind of like like a you know a, a dad to a young kid now, and I think it's just you know I want my daughter to know that don't give up so easily. You know, the, the game might be hard. It might be not be you know fun for you at the moment uh, because it's you know, kicking, totally kicking your butt, but don't give up just yet because the, the best part might be just around the corner. And I think, I fear that that is the kind of, you know, uh, mentality or, or common sentiment with, you know, today's youth. And, 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 and so, so circle back to what your question was, I think just don't give up, you know, whether it is RCC or somewhere else, you know, and just don't give up because finding, I think, you know, I, I, I have heard so many students, um, not just RCC students, but other schools that I've taught in the past that they, they just really think that if they somehow get accepted to one of these big name school, somehow that was, that will be a guarantee success, but that's not really the case. You know, and so so just that's where drive comes in. Yeah, yeah, and and I think you know, but, but with drive, I think that's also with kind of what I'm saying is just that uh, don't uh -oh. give up so easily. Did I lose you guys? No, I don't know. I Are you there? You. I hear you. We've been watching you draw. It's kind of mesmerizing. Yeah. Did we lose Patrick? Patrick. <laughs> And due to technical difficulties, Patrick Scullion <laughs> decided to drop out for a moment, but now he's back. So we I'm are now back. going back into into the groove. Should we go back, back. to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think uh, Patrick, are you playing game uh, <laughs> on the computer right now? He's sorry. Game. I just he's... had to I just had to load up Animal Crossing, and I was stuck. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, and, and, you were making a really good point. I'm sorry that cut off. No, no, no worries. Well, and, and you know, that goes to you too, Patrick. I mean, you've got these kids coming in and adults, because I don't think it's just kids. And I think that, no. uh, you know, there's a generation of adults that struggle with this too. Um, you know, they think that the minute they jump in that they're going to be, you know, I've got it. I'm successful. I, I, this is this is my dream. And yet they miss the point of, of how tough that dream can really be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I, I never thought about making that connection, but it's so absolutely true that just like with the games, you give up too early, you really got to stick with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then the other question that I would say is what programs would you prepare tell them to prepare themselves on, you know, uh, going with a, such a digital world uh, and, and an industry that's extremely digital, um, you know, what are the programs? Uh, they, they change so rapidly. I mean, even if you look at what the three of us are using to draw, you know, and they can, and each one can do the same thing. You know, I'm using uh, Clip Studio Paint. Sonny's using Photoshop and and you're using um, Procreate. Correct. You know, so what what would be what would you tell them? And then I've got a follow up question that I'm going to ask you both as well. Okay, well, um, I think that goes back to the the idea that you need fundamental skills, mm -hmm. fundamental drawing skills, and those are going to translate to whichever software you learn, and that flexibility which we talked about before of um, not just sticking with one program, learning Photoshop, learning um, Procreate, learning Clip Studio. Another one I used to use was Painter, Corel Painter for a long time. I remember that one. I, I used um, that one. And uh, learning how to use software means that you're going to be able to learn the next piece of software that somebody invents that you got to learn. So just be prepared for learning more software. Right. What about you, Sonny? Yeah, I, I think I think you know just to piggyback right on what Patrick said. I mean, don't you know? Just uh, there, there will always be new softwares now. But on one hand, I would say out of convenience, the Adobe software is all, so it's just it's very accessible. They're, are they the best? I, I'm not going to say that, uh, but I think they better they, than they, Quark. I'm oh, sorry, did that come <laughs> out? <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I with you on that one, hundred um, percent. But you know, um, I think as long, just get your hands on something, you know, and 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 start sketching and start painting or designing um when a little side story uh, and we'll circle back to this questions uh, when i was in in my first time i went to fullerton um i bought into that whole belief that that i think the school at the time wanted all the students to believe that you have to get all these fancy equipments fancy you know art supplies and you know i remember going to the art store like you know for the first time in my life thinking like oh these are all so cool but so expensive you know you know what i ended up doing most of the time when i was in graduate school um when i when it comes to sketching ballpoint pen uh, literally just the cheapest same here pen. if i if i cannot produce a ballpoint pen it, that, that image is not going to improve if i have a 15 dollars ink pen you know so 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 i think the same thing with software if you have the the understanding of compositions and lighting and things like that it doesn't matter what software that you use um and but once i think you, the student get past the initial learning, then maybe what they really want to do will determine what software do they, they, they will want to focus in. Because if they ended up wanting to do the infographic, then for sure they're going to have to learn Illustrator like really, really well. Okay. So that's really good. I appreciate that. Um, then the next question, and this one's a little bit more harder, is how do you convince an art, you know, how do you merge um, traditional arts and graphic design at a college level because <laughs> they get seen as two different things when in reality they're actually becoming the same thing you know we're doing painting and drawing stuff that we would do in traditional mediums but we're doing it on a digital level and while a traditional medium seems to be you know you'll get paid more on it if you can illustrate digitally you get paid far more sometimes than you can do traditionally true yeah. um i think that that question can go a variety of ways, just, just in the sense of where, where are people hiring anyways? What, where are the job opportunities? And um, for myself, I have always felt like um, drawing and art is my passion. I'm going to do it no matter what my day job is. And I want to cultivate those skills and I want to study those skills in college. And so I did, but 
I also wanted to work in a related field. So I changed my major from art to graphic design when I was first in school because um, I had, I actually got hired as a graphic designer before I was even finished with school. And I realized, you know what, this could be a good place to, to work. So I guess to relate that to today and what's, what's possible, I think it's important to, to look at a college and say, which program is going to lead me to a potential career? And while I want to build skills and I want to take my artistic courses, I do want to focus on a certificate or a degree that has a, a career attached to it. Okay. So my next question would be is how important would you say to some of these kids to encourage them to get into not just taking digital painting, um, but to take a traditional painting class as well? I mean, I th do you think that there's a value in both of the both sets of courses being offered in a college level? Or do you think that, um, you know, eventually they're just going to kind of fade out? Um, what would you say, Sonny? I, I think, you know, all skills are inherently good because depending on how you use it, like my personally, one of my ho hobbies is woodworking. Can I merge woodworking with what I do, you know, professional in teaching? Maybe not directly, but maybe indirectly there are lessons that I can learn from that. So, and I think, you know, going back to your questions, you know, can, could traditional art still be useful? I think so, because from my observations, um, students or designers, generally speaking, graphic designers who have some kind of, you know, fine art capability or just, I wouldn't, you know what, maybe I should rephrase it. I wouldn't call it fine art capability. I just will call it traditional art capability. If they have good understanding of composition perspective, um, maybe some understanding of, of how, you know, um, the, you know, but, figure drawing, you know, proportion and things like that. I think they will help no matter what. Uh, definitely a color, you know, theory. You, yeah. you get a lot of color mm -hmm. theory in that as yeah. well. You know, and that's where I'm saying, you know, I would love to see, and I know you guys struggle with this, how do you combine both groups so that, you know, you, the student will benefit from, from both? Because you're definitely going to have illustrators coming in and be told, well, don't take any graphics classes. You know, and you want and you go, wait a second, you guys got to need to take these graphic classes because you're going to need both sets to get you to where you need to, to you need both skill sets. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, um, you get some bad advice when you talk to uh, different people. And um, at the college level, there are different priorities. And so sometimes you could get some advice to take a, a few classes that aren't really necessary for your career. Um, or vice versa. And your question, I think, kind of speaks to a little bit of the, I don't want to say there's a wall, but sometimes there's a division on a college campus between a, the art classes and the design classes. Um, for me personally, there's never been a wall. I, I just, I, uh, I live in both worlds. So as a student, I think it's your responsibility to, um, to be careful about the choices you make and ask a lot of questions meet the teachers, um, explore the, the class options, and, and make the best choice for you. Don't let somebody talk you into a class that, that you really don't need to take if you don't need to. Yeah. Um, try to be careful about that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know, if I could add one more little thing to that. Um, Cost you a dollar. Of, uh, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll take two. I'll take two. I got two dollars in me. I'm willing to spend. Uh, you know what? One one of the best classes that I took when I was at Fulton was history of graphic design. I didn't even know that they 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 have, would have a class for it. Actually, I took history of graphic design, history of animations, and history of illustration. Really love those three history classes. All those other art history classes, like to be honest with you, I remember nothing. But graphic design, something really stood out to me was that. Um, graphic design, the early, early, early group of graphic designers, they were traditional painters. They were just traditional painters who, who were, you know, at the time, you know, were, they, they had the opportunity to cross over to do commercial work and eventually become more graphic design like, but they actually graphic designer and a traditional painter, they once share a common heritage. So for me nowadays to see, to witness what Patrick was alluding to, this you know, division, you know, I'm going to maybe even go as far as saying that, that this unnecessary school politics, um, it, it, it's silly. It really is silly. You know, I agree with you. I'm not arguing with you on that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because when you look back in history, you know, Michelangelo was a commercial artist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
you know, one of the most successful ones. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't think that it was different. And I, I see no difference for me personally between um, the, the art forms. It's, yeah. it's all whatever serves the purpose. Um, but don't be afraid of looking into graphic design, commercial art, photography, uh, film and video, animation. Yeah. You know, they're all career opportunities in those yeah. different areas. Yeah. Well, and what's neat is they're all connected to each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know. All righty. Well, this is what I've got so far. Nice. <laughs> you know, um, I definitely put my Pac-Man shirt in and threw Qbert in there. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are those grenades on the ground? Is that? Yeah, okay? yeah. Because you know he's coming out of a war game. You know, because most you know Contra was a war game, if I remember right. But I didn't want to put a gun in there because then I'd get in trouble. But grenades <laughs> were okay. So. Nice. Well. They're not, not grenades, they're little pineapples. Okay, they're little pineapples, and they're worth 10 points each. So <laughs> That is fantastic. Oh, my goodness, you do work fast. Patrick told me that you work fast, but you do work fast. That's amazing. <laughs> and I'll link it up this weekend. But, um, but yeah, let's go back to Sunny, and let's see where you're at, and then we'll go back to Patrick, and, and, and we'll go from there. Okay. Sounds good. It's, it's all on the wrist, Sunny. It's all on the wrist. <laughs> Ooh, that seems like it got darker. Did you? Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, <laughs> a little, uh, a little trick that I do, and and I, I wish I didn't flatten all my layers already. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I couldn't help it. You, 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 you know that that um, Injustice League, the the movie. You know how at the end when when Batman when when Superman asks, "How did you?" you know, get the house back from the bank. You know how Batman said, I bought the bank. It's like a reflex to me. Flatten layers <laughs> is one of my reflexes. I just do it without even thinking about it. Um, <laughs> no, but this is something that I will honestly say that that, that I do fully take advantage of Photoshop because um, I, I don't let Photoshop um, choose colors for me. But when I, as I'm painting, 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 um, I do find that at the end, um, I could adjust the contrast and heighten the saturation, usually just by a little bit. Um, not to a point that I'm changing my own color, but but I do find that, that sometimes if I have to repaint in that kind of heightened contrast and heightened saturation contrast by hand, it's it's going to take for a long time. So so I just, you know, usually once I feel like I, I got my color, my own choice of color in there, and then I just sort of tweak it at the end, um, just to give a little, little punch. And usually one of the first thing that I do is contrast because contrast is what build focal point and that's just something that I that I'm sure you know you guys as designers know that and and so 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 that's what I do so it did get darker nice I'd like to see some eyes on that bad guy in the back I and I, I will put some on there you know this so is great Sonny I like talk this about a lot. your uh, just real quick you know talk about your brush choices oh <laughs> Um, you know, I think I'm going to piss off a lot of people with what I'm about to say. Um, I cannot stand when people keep asking, what kind of brush do you prefer to use? Because there's so many brushes that, that you know, people always often, you know, will say, oh, so-and-so use this kind of custom brush. The way I look at it is that I just use my standard soft round and usually harden the edges. I don't really use any fancy brush because it's not in the brush. You know, if, if you don't have that you know, color sense and compositional sense, your brush hook is not going to help you. So, so I often find- It's all in the ballpoint I, pen. Yes. I really don't change my, my brush stroke at all. Um, I, I mean, I change the sizes, but I really don't change the different types of brushes. And, and uh, the truth to the matter is I'm just lazy. All right. I mean, I just, I, I'd, I'd rather have you to, honest than not. I, I rather work fast. And so I, I don't, I don't really care what brush to use. Now, in fact, to, to make a point a long time ago when I was teaching one of my classes, I, I custom make a brush that actually was a rubber duck and I painted a whole painting with a rubber duck brush. <laughs> just to illustrate That's it, commitment. That That's just, commitment. Just to illustrate a point that is not in your the brush choices that, that will make the difference. Now, now, but having that said, if you're talking about like someone who is an established painter, a digital painter, like, you know, Craig Mullen, I would love to see his different brushes because I will recognize what he's trying to do. But since, you know, it's just me, I, I'm not doing anything that important. So, so I, I don't really. Hey, you are. Brush. You're on Talk and Draw with uh, Travis and, uh, <laughs> and Patrick. This is the uh, most important you, event in your life. I know, right? I think you're so. You're entertaining, is... you know, tens of people right now, so. <laughs> 
think there's 11. I know my mom watches. <laughs> so, so there you go, Travis. He, he eyes. Um, I appreciate the eyes. My my, uh, my daughter just discovered spiders, and surprisingly, she doesn't hate them. And I told her about, like, you know, wolf spider and how they don't build nets, and they just go around and hunt. And she really likes them. And, and, and yesterday, when we were outside playing, she found a baby wolf spider, and she was, like, treating it as if it's a little pet. So so that's why I did the, the eight eyes. I like that though. That's very, very cool. That's cute. All right. So I think oh, me, what we're going to do is uh, oh, let me ask a, a couple final questions and then um, we're going to have to wrap it up, you guys. Um, but uh, let me. Uh, well, you're not doing anything you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's see. I'm going to share my last little pick of the Ninja Game. Look at that. Yeah. So um, here's a question for you, Sonia. I've been asking all of our guests the same question, but I'm going to modify it slightly for you. Um, oh, that's not fair. You know you're going to tick somebody <laughs> off now because you modified the question. <laughs> well, the first, first part of the question, part A, is okay, why, that's do you, better. <laughs> why do you make art? And then second, why do you teach? Oh, um, actually, I wrote, I wrote down some answers. <laughs> so let's see. Let me go back to it. Okay. Uh, why do I make art? Um, now, um, it, it might be one of those answers that, that we might actually piss some people off because it's not about relaxation. It is not about passion. I, I do love art, but it's not about that. Um, and I think part of it is because it's kind of challenging because it's never easy. It never is. It, it, you know, I've been doing this for 20 plus years as far as, you know, drawing and creating art. It, it's still not easy for me. And, and so, and there and never is a promise that the artwork will turn out nice. So, so I kind of, you know, thrive on that. And of course, you know, is it relaxing? Is it part of my passion? Yes, but I really don't do it for those reasons. I think it's just, it's just challenging. Um, and I will, you know, extend on that. That is the same reason why I like doing, you know, like, construction work at my house all by myself and concrete work woodworking because it's just it's just challenging it's fun it it it, it's, it stimulates me that way uh one of the new thing that i have been tackling on and patrick you know this um it's programming i started doing pro web programming languages and i and i find that i enjoy it as much as i enjoy art making and i think it's just that that sense of the unknown i don't know if i will be able to successfully ma mastered it and i think that is what somehow drives me don't know why i, mean, I guess oh, i am cool. just a glutton for you punishment like the challenge I guess. I guess i'm a glutton for punishment i think that's a very valid answer yeah it exciting well and, and then the follow-up uh, why do you teach now teaching i will honestly say i'm just going to say that that is divine intervention <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly that that is what I'm going to say because I, that was. So you're saying God has a sense of humor. I, I, oh, I, I know it. Why me? My goodness. Why me? That makes no sense. Um, and, and, and I think because um, I, I, you know, I, I like to plan things out. I make notes on my notes. This is how bad it is. But this teaching just, just was never part of the plan. And I, but I am forever grateful because it, it gives me a sense of purpose. And, and so, yeah, and I really enjoy working with students and, and, and even, you know, kind of what I was saying earlier that when, when students of RCC started like jokingly calling me the ADM mom and I went home and told my wife and she said, yeah, you totally are the ADM mom because you, you, that's what you do. You like to take care of people. And sometimes, you know, you get your nose in someone else's business. So I guess that's a maybe a different kind of a quality, but, but, but I just, yeah. Why do I teach? Because, you know, I, I feel like that's, that's my purpose. And, and I hope I will get to do that uh, for a bit longer. Yeah, me too. Cause uh, I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> and our students hey, love you. I, I got, I got your back. I got your back. <laughs> well, um, how about you, Travis? Why do you like to to mentor and teach? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you know, that's a... I, I think of it... Okay, it's kind of twofold. First of all, you know, years ago, someone took the time to teach me and not charge me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You know, and the and the only thing that they told me was that I was to pass it on. Oh. You know, and and I, I've taken that to heart, and I have found that 
by willing to pass it on, you find people that um, some take it, but others and others don't. But then there's a group of them that just do it and watching them succeed and being a part of that success is, is kind of um, intoxicating. Yeah. And, uh, you know, over the years, I've, I've got two or three that I know that are publishing their own works. They're just doing it. And, and each one of them started when they were 14 and they'd come up to my booth and just chat and just ask me questions. And then we would talk and they would open up their portfolios and we would go through it. And the next time they came, they, I noticed they started doing the, the things that we discussed. And so that, that would be, I think the key, why do I mentor? And I leave it with them too. I, I'm very direct. I said, I will give you any, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'll give you any bit of advice. I'll give you my contacts. I have nothing to hide artistically at all whatsoever on the same condition that when someone comes and asks you for a piece of advice or help that you, you give it to them with, with no expectations in return. And uh, I find that to be highly um, rewarding. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, I, you know we, we've joked about teaching. Uh, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> just, just to be honest I, I it's something that i don't know if i could do I, I i i think that the course would be right but i am so um hard on myself as a creator it's like well i don't think people are going to learn from me does that make sense you know or people go sure. oh he does it the wrong way it's not the quote right way and that that kind of eats at me Sure. And that's kind of why I don't really pursue a teaching career, but I will always mentor always any, sure. any time that I'm asked a question, regardless of how old you are or whatever, you know, uh, just because someone did that to me and, and I have found that to be the most incredible thing, you know, pass it on, pass it on to these artists because they hear it from everybody that it's the toughest profession in the world, which it is. And they hear that, oh, you're not good enough or don't do it or you can't make a living. Well, I find that to be crap. You know, my thing is, yeah, you can make a living at it. But it comes back to that drive that we talked about, Sonny, and, we, and the importance of, of willing to, um, you know, constantly step up your game. Watching you tonight, that helped me step up my game a little bit because I'm thinking, wow, I'd love to be able to digitally paint, you know, in some degree. Uh, when we talked with Chad Fry last week and hearing his story, same thing, you know, it was amazing to see what he went through or Eddie or some of these other people and how they motivate themselves to keep going. And, and I think that that's for me is, is just super important, you know, that mentorship and being willing to share, you know, we got nothing to hide. So. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> Well said. I, I wish I had a uh, a noble answer for why yeah. I teach. <laughs> That's not noble because I'm not teaching. I'm just giving advice. You get well, to teach. I I gotta say uh, I never wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> never never was in my plan either. Um, just kind of happened that way, and I'm so glad it did. You know, I did not know that I needed this in my life, and uh, I'm glad it's here. Because there, there really is something cool about um, being able to watch students develop their talents and uh, pursue their, their ideas and build their skills. Um, I've always approached it from the perspective of uh, what, what did I want to learn or what would I want to learn if were I in their position? And um, I certainly don't think I have the answers. Well, let me uh, ask you a question. No, I don't. You yeah, know, I mean, both of you. You know, I had an art teacher years ago in high school. It was the only time I took art was my senior year. And she made a comment uh, years later, I, I ran into her, and she said that her greatest joy was seeing 10 of her students succeed in different fields of art. And six of us was one year after another. There's six of us that almost came just like in sequence. Mm -hmm. um, and she, that was to her an achievement. You know, she watched student, you know, she watched some of her own kids actually make it. I can guarantee, or if, if it's not true, I don't know how long you guys have both been teaching, but how many times have you watched someone get it 
And how do you feel when they get it? You know, actually take it somewhere. The light bulb goes on. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and not just the light bulb, you see them producing work, valid work, and they start, you know, they, they end up making a living at it. Well, I don't know about Sonny, but I, I feel responsible for every person that sits in my class. And uh, I think about, I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to give them bad advice. I don't want to direct them in the wrong way because I care about what they do with what they get. And um, it's very gratifying to see it when a student succeeds. At the same time, um, life is tough. And sometimes there are challenges that come along. And the best thing you can teach is how to roll with the punches. Yeah. You know, how to deal with it. I don't know. What do you think, Sonny? You know, I think I, um, um, I, I don't think I keep track of actual numbers or, or how many times that I feel like happy for student. But, but I think the, as I'm sitting here listening to, to Travis's questions and, and Patrick to answer, the first thing that came to mind, um, and, I, and I'm sure this person probably will be watching this, uh, Phoebe, she's one of our recent graduate. And I remember, oh, she's still there, but, but she, she practically finished our program. And, and one of the things that I noticed early on is that, that she, she's really good at both in designing and also um, doing commercial printing. And I always thought that that I think she could be quite successful like running her, her own printing business rather than pursuing the designer part. Um, it's not that because she's not a good designer, but I just sort of see that, that there's something there that, that, that she uniquely has that, that that other student might still be sort of searching for and developing. And and to, to fast forward the story, at the beginning of this pandemic, I kept telling her that, hey, you need to start making masks. I mean, that that's a golden opportunity and and i and i think she did she ended up you know designing um producing making masks and selling them and and you know and and you know it, it's a small operation but but she she took that on and utilized what she has learned from um, our department and actually really really utilizing it and i think you know whether that is considered a big success you know small success to me is is it, it, it it's still a success it's still a successful story that, that she's taking what she has learned and actually practically applying it and actually getting, you know, being able to put food on the table. And I think that to me is the most wonderful thing. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Hey guys, this is, this has been uh, really enlightening. Um, Very emotional near the end. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Travis <laughs> made, me, made me tear up there. My, my friend, I just, um, it's uh there is, there's a purpose in all things. Yeah. And, uh, I, I believe that this is this is meant to be, and we've had a good conversation that hopefully might uh, help and enlighten somebody that's listening. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with that, I think we're gonna gonna wrap up and say thank you for your time and love seeing your artwork, and we're gonna catch up again later. So yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. This has been a nice little uh, visit into our studios and into our minds. So take care, everybody. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>